This is a road railer, an unusual piece of freight rolling stock, and certainly one of the most interesting pieces of rolling stock in my collection. Now, unfortunately, no one is currently manufacturing O-scale road railers, and so they can be a bit challenging to find at times. I recently picked up some used road railers on eBay, and so I thought, why not do a video on them? And so, I'm going to give you the story of the road railers, and we'll talk about the past, present, and possible future of this interesting model today on Eric's Trains. So what exactly is a road railer? Well, a road railer is a highway trailer or semi-trailer that is specially outfitted for use in railroad intermodal service. So, you know, normally the trailers are hauled by a rig or a tractor to make a tractor trailer set up for use on the highways. But with a road railer, the trailer comes off of the tractor and is put on the rails and the trailer itself becomes the freight car. Now road railers were introduced in the 1950s and the original ones had integrated wheel sets for use on the rails but modern road railers like these run on regular trucks and the trucks serve as the articulation point between the trailers. So prior to the development of the road railers, the way that the railroads transported trailers was with TOFCs, trailer on flat cars. So you had a flat car and then the trailer rode on top of the flat car. So the road railers offer a distinct advantage over the TOFCs because you don't need the flat car. The trailer itself becomes the freight car and therefore they can be more easily integrated into freight trains with other types of freight cars or even passenger trains with passenger cars. Now, in my view, I've always seen the road railers as sort of the middle step in the evolution of intermodal transport up to where we are now. So the first step was the TOFCs, the trailer on flat cars, then you got the road railers, and then you get to where we are today where we have the intermodal containers that ride in the well cars. And those intermodal containers can be very easily switched between different modes of transportation. That's why they're called intermodal containers because they can be on the boat for the trip overseas, then you put them in the well cars for the trip on the railroad across the country, and then you put them on a tractor trailer rig for the trip to the final destination. Now, of course, even though the majority of intermodal traffic now moves with the intermodal containers and the well cars, the road railers are not extinct by any means. They are still used today, not only in the United States, but in other countries as well. So you can definitely still go out on the rails and see these in service today. Now, the first O-scale road railers were initially made by a company called Bowser. Bowser is still around today, but they mainly focus on HO models. They still make some O-scale lost wax castings for detail parts and stuff like that, and they make a really nice O-scale foam engine cradle, and I actually have one of those. But as far as I know, they don't make any O-scale models anymore. But for a number of years, they made the O-scale road railers as well as the coupler mate, which is a separate piece of equipment that you have to have to run the road railers. I'll show you that later. And actually, they still make HO road railers, just not O-scale. From what I'm told, eventually the O-scale road railer tooling ended up in the hands of Weaver Models. I'm guessing because both companies were located in Pennsylvania and the original Bowser road railers rode on Weaver trucks. So there was some connection between the two companies already. And so Weaver made the road railers for a number of years. And actually my first exposure to road railers came through Weaver Models. They sold them on their site. You could buy them directly, but even at that, they were still hard to come by because oftentimes they were on back order. Either specific road names were on back order or all of them all together were on back order. And so they could be hard to find. But eventually, before Weaver went out of business a few years ago, I was able to get seven new road railers from Weaver. Four express tracks like you see here, which are basically Amtrak. And then three of the triple crowns that you've already seen. And then Weaver went out of business and that was it. And so... Right now, nobody is making the road railers. And so because of that, they can be a little bit challenging to find sometimes. The only way you can buy them now is on eBay or at train shows and stuff like that. And so over the years, I've sort of kept a loose eye on eBay and 
they will pop up on eBay from time to time, and if I see them, and if I have the money, I'll get some. And so recently, I saw a bunch of the original Bowser road railers show up on eBay, and oddly enough, they were being sold by Tom McComas from TM Books and Video, and so I bought eight of them. And so those are the first Bowser road railers that I've ever had. So now I have eight of the Bowser road railers and seven of the Weaver road railers. So what we're going to do now is unbox the road railers that I got in from TM Books. And then we'll put them on the layout and I'll show you how they work because there is a little bit of a learning curve to operating the road railers as well as an extra piece of equipment that you need. And then we'll compare the Weaver and Bowser road railers. And then we'll talk about the possible future for the road railers because, yes, there is a possible future. And then after that, we'll run these around the layout for a couple minutes. So here are the two boxes of road railers. I'm going to go ahead and open the larger box first for you because that was the first one to come in. So there are six road railers in here. I've got two of the Swift road railers. I've got two Triple Crowns, and then I've got two Schneiders. And it should be noted that I believe when they were making these, they had some variations in at least the Schneider and the Triple Crowns in terms of the size of the logo and so forth. So I don't know exactly all the variations that were made, but I do know they existed. Now, Tom McComas, who owns TM Books, and who I bought this from, he was kind enough to include in this box a complimentary DVD, 21st Century Great Layouts. So thank you, Tom. I'll have to check this out. If you've never checked out any of the DVDs from TM Books, go ahead and do it. They make some great stuff. And Tom also gave me some other stuff in here. There's a... There's a 15% off coupon for TM Books. And then there's a uh, little catalog. And he also gave me a little note. Eric, thanks for your business. Hope you enjoy the DVD. Thanks, Tom. So that's the first six road railers I got. Now let's check out the other box. Here's the second box that arrived about a week after the first box. And this one contains another two road railers. Because like I said, I try to get as many as I can whenever I see them. And this box contains two more of the Schneider road railers. So now I've got a total of four of these. Pretty nice. And once again, Tom McComas packed a coupon and a catalog and another note in the box. Eric, thanks for ordering again. Sending you another show from our latest series, Best Tom. And here it is. 21st Century Great Train Layouts Part 2. So now I've got Part 1 and 2. Thanks a lot, Tom. I will definitely be checking these out. And again, if you've never checked out any of the videos from TM Books, give them a try. They are so well made, and they're so much fun to watch. And if you've ever wondered what and who my influences are in making my own videos, well, Tom McComas and his gang were a big influence when I first started making my own videos. All right, so now let's get these eight new road railers out of their boxes and up on the layout along with the other road railers that I already own, and I'll show you how they work. Now, these are not in brand new condition. They have been used, and so they do have some scuff marks and minor wear and tear, but all in all, they're in pretty good shape. And there we have one of the Bowser road railers. Now, even though these do have some scuffs and marks on them because they're used, I'm not too worried about it because I'm eventually going to weather these anyway, so it's not a big deal for me. But it should be noted that even in used condition like this, these road railers still command a pretty good price. I paid $50 a piece for these on eBay, which is about par for the course. So even in used condition, you pay almost as much as these things cost when they were brand new. And the reason they've held their value is because nobody's making them anymore. Anyway, let's check out some of the details on this road railer. Now the body itself is all one piece up here. The details are molded into the plastic. This is not a super high-end, highly detailed model at all, but it's very nicely done. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but the body here feels like ABS plastic. 
And I know when Weaver took over making the road railers, they made theirs out of styrene plastic. And I actually like the Weaver road railers a little better because of that. Because I'm going to weather these, and in my opinion, styrene plastic tends to take weathering a little better than ABS. You can weather ABS, no problem, but styrene just takes it a little better because the styrene has a little more bite to it. But anyway, the body's very nice. As you can see, the paint scheme is flawless. On the back here, we've got some nice details. The doors don't open, of course, but it looks very nice. On the bottom here, we've got this bottom piece that screws in to the top piece. This is the tongue that connects to the adjoining road railer, so that's how they connect to each other. On the Bowser road railers, this was a more complicated piece that goes up into the body. On the Weaver road railers, they simplified it quite a bit and just made it one little piece. You can see the Bowser name there on the underside, and when Weaver made these, they still kept the Bowser name on there. Then we've got this little stand here that the trailer rests on when it's not on the road or on the rails. And on the Bowser model, this piece actually moves up and down a little bit like that. On the Weaver road railers, it's a static piece that does not move. Then over here, we've got the road wheels, and they do turn a little bit, but they're not meant to be free rolling and to be used as a real tractor trailer. They're just there mainly for decoration, but we do have these nice little dust flaps on the back, which is kind of cool. And then we've got the truck, and this is a Weaver truck. Early Weaver models used plastic body trucks with metal wheels, so this has a plastic truck. Later on, Weaver went to die cast metal trucks, which were much nicer. And on some of my Weaver road railers, I've got die cast metal trucks on those, but their plastic body trucks were okay. Now, you'll notice there's this piece that moves up and down. Well, this is the locking mechanism for the tongue coming from the adjacent road railer. So when you lift it up, it opens up a hole there in that slot. You slide the tongue in there, you pop it back down, and it locks it in place, and that's all there is to it. It's pretty simple. Now. Of course, you'll notice that this only has one truck. And in order for the other end to be held up, it has to join onto the adjacent road railer so that it can use that road railer's truck. But as you can imagine, at some point, you're going to need a second truck to complete the train. And that's where the extra piece of equipment comes into play, the piece of equipment called the coupler mate. And that was sold separately, and you had to have the coupler mate in order to complete your road railer train. So you can buy all the road railers you want, but without that coupler mate, it's not going to work. And the trouble is that, you know, I said that the road railers were a little bit hard to find, while well, the coupler mates are even harder to find. So you have to get one of those before you can use these, and those are kind of hard to find. Now, fortunately, a few years ago, I found a set of four coupler mates, and I bought them all. So I've got plenty. I'm not worried about it. But if you do get any of these road railers, you do have to find one of those O-scale coupler mates. I'll explain more about the coupler mate in just a little bit, but just know that you have to have it, and they are a little bit hard to find. Okay, so on the left here, I've got a Weaver road railer, and on the right, I've got a Bowser road railer. And I've got them turned upside down so that I can show you how these tongues work and what they're all about. So on the Bowser model, let me go ahead and lift off this bottom piece. I've already unscrewed it. The way that the tongue worked on the Bowser model was that it went up into the body, and it was this piece that was connected with this screw. And by default, it would have a long tongue sticking out that would allow you to connect this road railer to the next road railer in the train. However, if you undo this screw and flip it over, you get a short tongue. And the short tongue would be used to connect the lead road railer in the train to the coupler mate so that it could then be coupled to your engine or any other freight cars or passenger cars that you wanted to couple the train to. And so that's how it worked on the Bowser model. Now on the Weaver road railers, they simplified that a bit so that you wouldn't have to disassemble the model to switch the tongue. They just had a flat tongue piece that was secured to the body with a screw. So this one has what they called the medium tongue, which I actually liked a lot because it would allow you to connect it to the next road railer in the train, but it would pull them a little bit closer so you got a little more realistic action between them. It also came with a long tongue that you could swap out and the long tongue would give you a little more space between the cars so that if you're running it on tight curves, 
the cars won't knock up against each other. So you have that long tongue option. And then finally, they had a short tongue. And the short tongue, again, would be used to connect the lead road railer to the coupler mate. Okay, now let's build a train with these road railers, starting in the front with the coupler mate. So on the coupler mate, there are a couple things I want you to notice. Number one is this slot right here. And then number two is this pad with this hole. So what's going to happen is that on our lead road railer with the short tongue installed to go to the coupler mate, the tongue itself will go into that slot and then this little plastic post will seat into that hole on that pad. So let's go ahead and get our road railer on the rails. There we go. And now this is going to get tricky because I got to wrap myself around the camera. So with the coupler made in one hand and the road railer in the other, I'll just come up and slide the tongue into that slot and then seat that post in the hole. And there we go. And that's all there is to it. So if I lift this up, you can see that the tongue is in that slot and then that pad is right underneath that post and that post is going into that hole. And that's all there is to it. So now, this is the lead road railer and it has two trucks and we have a coupler up front to couple to the engine or any other cars we want. All right, so with our lead unit set up, we're gonna keep on adding more road railers to our train. So here is a Bowser road railer, and I chose this just to show you that the Weaver and Bowser road railers are completely compatible with each other. So we're gonna lift up this section above the truck. It's gonna open up that slot in the back. We'll pop the tongue in, lower it down. It's locked in place, and we're good to go. So let's keep on going. So here's the next one, and this is one of those Weavers that has the medium tongue. And again, I like it because it draws these a little bit closer so they look a little more realistic. Here's another Bowser. Pop it in there. And now, as you can see, I've got a whole train made up of these road railers. Pretty cool. Now, when you get to the end of all these road railers, there are two things you can do. If you want to, you can do it just like this, where this is the last road railer, it's the end of the train, and as you can see, there's no opportunity to couple anything else to the end of this train. Or you can do it like this. Now, this is another road railer that I have. And let me connect this one to the adjoining one. This is going to be a challenge because I'm wrapped around the camera right now. There we go. And here you can see it's got a Weaver truck on the end as always, but I've also added a Weaver coupler. And if you've ever seen Weaver trucks, you know this is really easy to do. So now I can couple anything I want to at the end of all these road railers. All right, so now that you know something about the road railers, let's talk about their possible future. Now, when Weaver models went out of business several years ago, their tooling was split up between Atlas and Lionel. Atlas received all of Weaver's overseas tooling, so anything they made overseas went to Atlas. And Atlas has since made use of that tooling. The new Atlas Troop Sleeper Cars and Troop Kitchen Cars, those are all made from X-Weaver toolings. And actually, the Atlas versions are far superior to the Weaver versions because they don't have the problem with zinc rot that the Weaver models had. And actually, I'll be revealing those Atlas Troop Kitchen Cars and so forth in the near future. Now, as for Lionel, they received all of Weaver's American tooling. Weaver actually made a lot of their stuff here in the States. Most of their plastic bodied rolling stock was made here in the States, including the road railers. Lionel has also made use of some of the old Weaver tooling. You may not know this, but the Lion Scale product line that has been featured in the Lionel catalogs over the last few years, those models are made from the old Weaver toolings. And the reason those models are made here in the States is because they always were. And so Lionel just kept production here in the States, although they did move part of the production process down to Lionel headquarters in North Carolina. So anyway, like I said, Lionel should have the road railer tooling on hand, and so I really hope that they bring it out again at some point in the future. Heck, there's a new Lionel catalog that is supposed to come out later this month in July 2019. Who knows? Maybe they'll be in that catalog. Maybe they won't, but I really hope they do them at some point in the future because these are really cool models and they really deserve to be made again. 
right, so now comes the fun part. I've got these road railers coupled up behind my good old MTH Montana Rail Link SD45, and we're gonna take them for a spin. So that about does it for this video. Of course, if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. And also, you can support Eric's Trains via Patreon by going to www.patreon.com slash Eric's Trains. And if you're a first-class supporter, you get your name listed at the end of every Eric's Trains video while you're a supporter. Anyway, let's go ahead and roll it out.
All right, so now I'm gonna take my eight new road railers and we're gonna put them on the layout and do something. Ha, ha, ha. 